Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel again. I thought I'd show off my newest toy. Um, one of the only new things I've bought in a long while, actually. And it is this, the PlayStation TV. Now, it normally retails here in the UK at around £90. It went down to 85 But for some reason, it's taken a massive, massive price drop. And I got this for... £40. Well, it retails, it's on offer at the minute at work for £40 with my staff discount. I got it for 30, uh, 36 quid. So, an absolute bargain. So, I'll just show you what it is. PlayStation TV, flip it round. I'll read the little description for you. PlayStation TV is a small, sleek, and simple to use micro console that lets you stream your PlayStation 4 games to another HD TV and play compatible PS Vita, PSP, and PS1 games on your TV. Uh, here's what you get inside this one. Uh, you get a, uh, a voucher for the PlayStation Store. Voucher includes Worms, Revolution Extreme, Velocity Ultra, and Oli Oli. I've already redeemed those. So, pretty much, it's a two part little system, I guess. It's one part home console version of a PlayStation Vita, and then it's second part streaming device. So, you can play your PlayStation 4 in another room around the house without having to cart around. The big heavy beast that is the PlayStation 4 console. So there's the box, uh, that's what you get inside it anyway. This is the basic one. I think there is a version where you get a DualShock 3 controller as well. So you get the PlayStation TV system, a HDMI cable, which is fantastic, AC adapter, AC power cord, printed materials, and a digital download voucher. So I'll show you the machine itself. Here it is. It's absolutely tiny. I mean, deck of cards, I'd say. Yeah. So here's the front of it, nice little. It's a matte finish Sony logo just there. Flip it round, there's the slot for the Vita cartridges. And if I can get into the damn thing. There we go. So you put those in there. Um, you can't play all Vita games and all PSP games. Some of them, for reasons unknown, don't work. I mean, Vita ones, if they are touchscreen heavy because you're now using a controller, it's a little bit obvious. But there's certain PSP games which just aren't compatible, which is really strange. So there's the port, anyway I'll flip it round, so as you can see we have, once you move it a bit closer, we've got the power button there, we've then got a slot for the Vita memory cards, unfortunately it doesn't take micro SD which is a bit of a shame, uh, it would have been nice if you could do that. It's got a USB, a USB slot so you can plug in your controller, DualShock 3 or DualShock 4, whichever you prefer. Uh, HDMI out so you can hook it up to your nice fancy TVs and a Ethernet port, Cat6 port, whatever, LAN port, whatever you want to call it and the AC power port just there. So there's the little machine itself and here it is next to a DualShock 4. I mean excuse the state of my controller, I do use it a hell of a lot. I mean as you can see it's absolutely tiny, it's probably one of the smallest consoles ever distributed, created. A lot smaller than the Ouya as well. Uh, what do I think of it? I've been using it in the bedroom to stream my PlayStation 4 games from my living room. Uh, when it's on a local connection, there is, I mean, there is a little bit of lag. It's its not even half a second, I'd say, if you've got a good, a good home connection. Um, playing single-player games is fine. It works absolutely, absolutely fine. You can get around the tiniest bit of lag. Playing competitively, I tried playing Battlefield Hardline on multiplayer, and... On a competitive level, it's not very good. That that split second of lag kind of destroys any kind of semblance of skill. So I wouldn't really recommend it for, for those kind of games. I'll tell you what, it does really well. Um, PS Vita games look surprisingly well on this little machine. I'm playing Muramasa Rebirth. Um, it's a side scroll ninja, japanese kind of hack and slashy game. Uh, where you just kill loads of bad guys and level up and collect swords and things. Because all the backdrops in the game are hand-drawn and the sprites are really, really polished and really, really fine and detailed. Even on a big screen when it's blown up, it looks really, really nice. So that's good. A few games do look a little bit weird. I mean, that Worms game, what I get for free in the uh, in the box, just that little Worms voucher. That doesn't really hold up too well on the TV. The textures of the maps are very very stretched I'm sure a lot of Vita games will look like that but I got rid of my Vita a while ago because I just wasn't using it it were it were a, a substitute Facebook and YouTube machine and I thought I'd get rid of it now that I've got this back again it's kind of spurred me back on to buy Vita games and collect all those lovely trophies what I'm so addicted to collecting so that's the PlayStation TV would I recommend it 
yes I would especially if you've got a fairly big house like this one here what we have and if you want to save yourself from carting USB uh, not USB HDMI cables and power supplies and your big fat PlayStation 4 console around your house so thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon